uh, we don't really look into the material level of uh, uh, a model. We're just looking on the on the uh, various elements like uh, family types, floor types, uh, um, wall types, and, and so on. Uh, and the only thing, uh, the only information we take from the Revit model is the total uh, areas or volumes of those elements, not their materials themselves. So uh, we don't really mind if there is a wall or a column which is empty of materials, or if uh, it only has one material which is called generic material one and any other uh, quite vague description of the material. So those families, um, they are in the model um, from, from the start as, as the BIM modeler created them. So um, the information we get is, for example, for, for this wall, uh, the information we're gonna get is the total area of this wall and uh, the family type name. So every single element in Revit, it belongs to a family type, which belongs to a family. So uh, there are two pieces of information as I said, the family type and area or length or volume. So the benefits of this uh, um, workflow um, of, of, this, um, of, of this way of importing the Revit model into e LCD is that uh, we can directly match a Revit family with an e LCD template. So uh, we won't need to link you into any materials because all the individual materials of a family type or a template in eTool, uh, they have already been defined for a specific functional unit, like in, in for example, in a per square meter basis. So by linking this wall type uh, with um, um, with an external wall uh, type in it tool, uh, we directly can we can directly calculate the total amount of materials for this wall and every other single wall of this same uh, family type. Um, at an early stage, when uh, either information of the build up of a wall or a floor is not known yet, or even if it's known, it's not modeled in Revit. Uh, the benefit of this uh, methodology is that all these materials will be in the eTool template. So you don't need this information to be in the Revit model. So all you need to know is, uh, all you need in the Revit model is um, a family type name that can make you understand what type of wall this is so that you are able to uh, to basically match it with an eTool uh, template. So for example, if we go to the templates tab and try to add a template, if I type external wall, uh, there are several templates here uh, that relate to whole construction um, templates like uh, this uh, external wall, Plastiball, metal studs, fiberglass insulation, um, structural frame system, and concrete panels. So this, for example, if I add it for 100 square meters and assign it to the whole building, and we can see that this template, although all I did was to assign it a total area of 100 square meters, uh, we can see that it has already information of uh, various on various materials like insulation um, uh, steel elements uh, the structural frame uh, frame system uh, concrete panels and uh, vapor barriers and so on and it comes even with uh, information on equipment used for construction and people which are going to be uh, reported in the a5 uh, um, life cycle states yeah, so for Intel users that they do uh, uh, work on Revit, um, I would suggest that uh, they try to create uh, or identify at least because there, there are uh, many uh, existing templates in the library, uh, try create or identify uh, one template for uh, one family type or at least a generic uh, e tool template for a generic family type so that they can then 
um, slightly modify, clone the existing templates and create new ones with uh, minimal effort. Uh, and in this way, uh, they will be able to load the whole Revit model within, I don't know, one or two minutes, literally, and have a, a, a whole um, LCA model in, in minutes. So any change that you do in your Revit model, either that is addition or deletion of any of those elements in Revit, uh, this will be uh, this will update uh, your Etool LCD model as well. So it will update uh, all the quantities. Obviously, if you delete all the elements of this wall type, for example, uh, if you select uh, yeah all these instances, uh, there are. In this case, there are four elements of this wall type. <clears throat> if you have already linked them with uh, with a template and you delete them in Revit, obviously it, uh, Etool LCD will remove that template as well. Uh, in addition, if you introduce a new Revit family type, so for example, if you replace all of those walls with a new wall type, then um, you will see this family type um, in in uh, the import tab, and it will be identified as uh, as a as a family type that it has not been linked with uh, with a template yet. So all you yeah. will need to do is go and link it with with a template, and it will be added and linked with uh, with it too. So in this case, what you could do as a as a Revit user is um, uh, basically. Uh, introduce uh, another parameter uh, like the description and try to describe uh, that family type um, uh, in in this parameter so for example we could say external wall uh, plaster board and sfs and uh, insulation and any other elements here so um if you're if you're creating your Revit model this way, or if you uh, create your uh, family library uh, this way, then um, an additional step uh, to to help you uh, um, with uh, the instant mapping of uh, Revit family types with the tool templates would be to introduce um, um, a Dynamo uh, script. Uh, which would, uh, in this case, it, it would uh, change the Revit family uh, type name with uh, its description. So um, that is a relatively uh, straightforward thing to do for anyone that uses Dynamo. It would take this text and assign it to the type name. And then you have a Revit, uh, a Revit model instance that is perfectly aligned with your uh, Etool library, and it will allow you to build your whole model in 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 a couple of minutes, I would say. And I'm logged in. Uh, so the second thing you have to do is to link this Revit model with uh, a specific design. In this case, I have created an Etool LCD uh, UK training, which I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to use this structure and then this um, design. And I'm going to link it, and then I'm going to click Update E2 LCD, and this is basically uh, getting all the quantities from the Revit model, and at step two, it's going to uh, send them to, to that specific design, and that uh, should be done. And if I go to that specific design, we will see that uh, in the import uh, tab, uh, it says that it was last updated on the 14th of July, which is uh, today's date. Uh, the Revit um, uh, model name, which is that one. And then we have to click on the edit button. Say that the default design function, in this case, it's, it's an office space. So I'm going to say that. And so in this page, uh, we have a list of all the different uh, family types um, within the Revit model. Uh, the category, uh, the family type name, area, volume, length, and number of uh, um, 
instances. And here we can select the chosen units. So in this case, we're talking about uh, still uh, columns. So I'm gonna say I want to use volume and it, it will has already identified uh, the right template, which in this case, it's called frame structure still in cubic meters. And it also gives you the templates units to, to make sure that um, it matches with the one that you have chosen. And here you can also select the design function. Uh, so if there are any elements that uh, have to do with any other function, in this case, it's pretty straightforward because it's an office building. So all elements are going to be attributed to the office space. Uh, but yeah, if, if needed, you can, you can change it here. Um, so there are several other uh, family types here. Some of them have already been identified. Uh, there is a CLT roof. Um, uh, it has uh, matched it with uh, this template, which is in square meters. So I'm going to say square meters here. I'm going to say cubic meters here because it's concrete foundation. And yeah, that is correct. That's a three pile, three pile, pile cup. And the same for those ones as well. And let's see what else did we. Uh, yeah, it also. Uh, managed to uh, map this one, which uh, seems to be the glass uh, balustrade, which is in uh, square meters. Uh, wall is external, uh, external wall is uh, square meters as well, and square meters for this generic wall as well. Uh, yeah, so because generic wall, it, um, it mapped it with uh, um, an, average, uh, an average external wall probably. But yeah, you can always just, uh, if you don't like the mapping, you can always just uh, uh, map it with something different. You can click here and uh, type anything, anything you would like here. Uh, so let's say that we want this to be uh, internal wall. Uh, let's say that we want this template here. And yeah, I'm not going to spend uh, more time on mapping all of those family types. So uh, if uh, whenever you're happy with all the mappings, you can say that you have reviewed it. It will give you a, a message that there are uh, that many items that uh, they have not been matched with um, with a template. So you can either go back and review those if you just missed them, or you can ignore them and continue. And this way, uh, if you go back to the templates, you will see all those family types that we mapped with templates. They are here with uh, their quantities and the units and with uh, the, all the impacts calculated um, already. It's not, it's not necessary to, to model everything in Revit or all the material quantities to come from Revit. Uh, you, you, you can basically do it in a hybrid way, let's say. So you can have Revit and you can add manually quantities here if they're not included in, in your Revit model. For those uh, big projects that you have separate structural model, for example, and se separate uh, architectural model and separate MEP model, you can have three different instances or uh, even if, if the billing is uh, split in you know, uh, five or um, as many as uh, different models uh, needed, you can have multiple files here. So you can have five different architectural models and five different structural models and so on. Uh, so you can, um, you can collect information from several uh, Revit models here. Uh, and all you have to do is open uh, each Revit model um, separately and follow the same process as, uh, as uh, in this case. And you'll just see several instances in the import tab. Um, another thing to mention is that obviously the link is uh, a one-way um, link. So anything you do in e LCD is not going to affect your Revit models in, uh, in any case. Um, obviously, yeah, changing the quantities cannot change the, the Revit model, but also uh, changing the template name is not going to change anything in a, in your Revit model. 